Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Bailey. Our campaign is The Curse of Nineveh. It was written by Mike Mason, Mark Latham, Scott Dorward, and Paul Fricker, and it's available on the Chaosium website. I am the GM, and this is episode 18. Our recap will be given by John Byram as his character, Felix Matthews. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. John? Thank you, Tom. It's been a long day. It's been an exciting day, filled with ups, downs, riots, and close to some very violent times. Start our day to find out that uh, our friend Punchin had been kidnapped from Bedlam after a riot where knives were given to female inmates or patients, however you see fit to describe them. And someone made off with our dear Punchin. Well, after digging around for a while, we found out that the people didn't do it on their own. They had help from a John Elwick, an orderly. A bit of sniffing around led us down to a bar where Mr. Elwick was enjoying an afternoon beverage. And while some of us only wanted to talk, it seemed that talking wasn't going to get anywhere. So we escorted Mr. Elwick to our car where our discussions sometimes lead to less friendly, less friendly times. But those times are also very productive. And this time was no different because we found out that he was working for a Mr. Sabaggio. Mr. Sabaggio is an ex-surgeon who was also known as the Butcher of Malay. Somewhere in Soho, the Butcher of Malay is sniffing around and apparently pulling strings. So we're going to find out where that is, hopefully. And with all of our lives intact, and maybe maybe we'll be able to get in touch with him and find out exactly what's going on. Uh, obviously, the police would probably be a better, better suited group for this, but when we tried to reach out to them, we were just disregarded as a as a bunch of kooks because we didn't have any hard evidence. So now we're sitting at the club getting ready to enjoy a, enjoy an evening meal and sipping a touch of whiskey to take the edge off of everything that we've just been through. All right. So in fact, you have been served your food and you are re-nourishing yourselves after a lot of running around and a lot of anxiety on your parts. What's your next move? Your next move is to unmute yourselves. <laughs> well, the evening schedule is, is fairly open. I don't think any of us want to go rushing down to Soho right now in the, in the sunset lest we never see a sunrise. That's the problem. I've never um, attempted to locate the lieutenant of a vast criminal underworld before in his lair. Uh, I fear wasting any time lest Mr. Punchin lose his skin. Uh, and for that matter, this um, Savaggio or his master might have the horn, the eye, uh, might be able to use the uh, opening of the shadow gate spell with efficacy that Mr. Punchin could not. But I don't know how to find a criminal in a criminal part of town. Hmm. This is where the part where I wish we were on a lot better terms with the children of tranquility. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's another factor to keep in mind, gentlemen, in that uh, while we all have been thinking that there is a good chance that our dear Professor Punchin has uh, been dispatched, there's also a good chance that he may be kept alive because let's face it, he is one of the few people out there that uh, can uh, translate uh, these documents, these these cuneiform uh, uh, embossings and such 
um, just to get rid of him for what he has on him might be a very rash move. It would be a lot easier just to keep him, shall we say, stable and then uh, have him be investigated while they write down the uh, information and perhaps at a later date wake him up and uh, force him to translate. Well, if they have, if they're keeping him hostage, if you will, I'd say that they've probably stopped by the local chemist and picked up something like laudanum or something to keep him heavily sedated mm -hmm. because he was freaky. You know, he was freaked out as it was. And if he got kidnapped for somebody who's directly looking at the scroll on his body, he's, he's going to be so freaked out that they're going to have to sedate him. Well, that's the thing is they keep him sedated. They can look at him all they want. They could shave his head. They could uh, look at every single inch of him and record what's there. But yeah. the, but the question is, uh, how desperate are they to? How desperate are they? If they're really desperate, they may just go ahead and and uh, skin him. I hate to say. No, and, no. Think think about what you're saying. If you were to skin him, what about the areas on his face that are connected to bones and stuff like that? They're going to destroy a lot of the writing if they try to skin parts like his face. Or mm -hmm. his fingers. Gentlemen, don't forget who his captor is. A mad surgeon. The question is, how desperate are they right now? If they're not very desperate, they're going to keep him alive. Uh, if they're really desperate, then they may just have to proceed with uh, rather grisly results. And uh, Cyrus is right. If we got a master surgeon, he could probably work around things. And the, what I'm afraid of is if there's any kind of upsetting uh, circumstance that might push their hand. Yes, but as Fuller noted, he's in no condition to help anyone translate anything. And Not so now. the knowledge in his head is of very little value to these people. And the scrolls that he had, as we understand it, were also incised on human flesh. So that might be the way this tradition is handed down. No, we don't really know the, the full extent of the tradition. That's the thing. Yeah, so it's all moot because we don't know how to find Savaggio. I have the first idea. I mean, we are going wandering around Soho with an obvious injury and saying, hello, is there an illegal surgeon here? Seems to me very unlikely to succeed. No. Soho's too big. Too much going on there and too many uh, competing elements to be sure. And we'd get hit before we even... I I would hazard to guess that if he is being held someplace within Soho, it would be with some form of gang. Because if Savaggio is working on his own, then he can't restrain him, keep watch mm -hmm. out. So I think that we would look, we'd be better off looking at places like bars or tenement houses that, has a bunch of like gang members hanging outside. Mm. But Savaggio is a highly wanted man in multiple countries. He's probably rich. He set himself up very well. And he's a surgeon. He knows about medicine. He, uh, our friend is probably sedated and unconscious and an easy subject to read, shave, transcribe, whatever they need to do with him. Cyrus, do a, a, an idea roll. Sixty-seven fail. Okay. Cyrus isn't the most intelligent fellow on the planet. Well, so if somebody else wants to do an idea roll, because you're listening to Cyrus talk. Twenty-five hard success. No, bye. Three. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, if you recall, um, our little uh, our little uh, criminal uh, uh, orderly, uh, Sean Elwick, it's not really cri criminal crime a criminal, but he's obviously got had some a little bit of a nefarious past. That 
he went to Savaggio uh, for some medical reason, and that medical and that uh, Savaggio bargained with him that someday I might need your help, and I'll call upon you. Typical, typical stuff that you know a, a, a monster like Savaggio would do. But um, what it means is that probably a lot of the criminal element, even the minor criminal element, knows where he is. Well, Cyrus, it looks like it's your turn again. What? Uh, uh, bullet wound and go get it stitched up? I don't feel like getting shot today, but no. we can pretend to have a bullet wound. No, I meant roughing up a low life. Uh, well, why? Okay, possibly. Yes, I, I won't say no to that, but what if we'd have to dress down, get into the part, if you went to the bars or the gang areas and talk loudly and let people hear, fuck, you know, this guy got shot. I don't know where we're going to sew him up, but we can't take him to the doctor. Somebody might have their hand out for some money and say, yo, bring your guy if he's still alive to X, Y, Z. If not, then we could. I mean, we got enough people looking for us already. Never mind roughing up more people, which I'm not opposed to. I If that, if it, you know. Well, but, rather than just acting it out in public, between you and Felix, Cyrus, you must know enough people who are on the margins of society that we could just say, hey, I need a surgery done on the sly. Do you know a guy? And if we don't mention any names, then they're not going to necessarily suspect that we're going to turn them over to Savaggio when things get terribly awry, which they will. Uh, look, you guys, my whole staff, you know my staff, you know how loyal they are. There's a reason why they're so loyal. And I guess it's as good a time as any to let you in on a little, on I guess my little dirty secrets. Uh, every one of my staff are ex-felons. They had nowhere else to go. And most of them were pretty decent guys. Every Matter of fact, every one of them are decent guys. So instead of letting them sit there and rot in the prisons. My father knew a couple of them and I would go down and, and he would go down. We'd visit, we'd put money in there. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. Their money in their canteen so they could buy things and, and have a, at least a halfway decent stay there. And it was appreciated. And so when they, when we finally worked a way for them to get out, worked out their release or bought their way out however each of them were each of them were uh, removed from that situation they didn't have anywhere to go so we took them in we took them in we treated them as one of our own respect loyalty came and that's why whenever we need anything it's very easy to call on them and say hey we need something I need something back but it's a two-way street I take care of them, they take care of us. So when next, if next, we meet again, at least you'll know on what footing we stand with my staff. My staff is my family, regardless of their birth mother or father. So that's where that loyalty comes in. I have the loyalty of blood regardless of whether or not it runs the same in my veins and theirs. So if we need to know where the criminal element stands or any contact between the two, between us and them, we have the liaisons at our disposal. Nice. That paints a much more clear picture of how they were able to clean up your car and dispose of a body so eloquently. Two. Two bodies. Two, well, you know, who's counting? Well, it's going to be uh, three because you just made the man piss in my back seat. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I w don't forget, there's all, we also know a couple of low-life thieves from the museum that might know a little bit about Soho also. The bad thing about using people that we don't know and are, are not loyal to us and don't have that trust. I got you. Is that it'll get back. So do you think Belvedere or Benson would be comfortable uh, over the telephone giving, uh, receiving instructions to uh, locate this Savaggio? 
I think they'd probably be okay with it. I mean, obviously, it would be me calling, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll give them a call. I'm against delay. I'd like to find a location right away and go in loaded for bear. All right, so. Before we do. Oh. Go ahead. Before we do that, let's see how our uh, meeting with the Children of Tranquility tomorrow works out. Because if we're looking for a force, uh, there's a possibility we might have it with them, as much as I am very dubious on relying upon them for any kind of uh, action. Uh, that's, this that's, might be in their interest as well. Yes, but it's more than, it's about 18 hours away, that meeting. That's a long time to leave yes. uh, a defenseless man in the hand of a sadistic maniac. And they've never done anything for us, except take things away. Well, they took away that blasted statue. That's quite a bit. Still distrustful of them, but they at least did that. Yes, Go but it wasn't a lines. favor. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we made the decision we did, but they weren't doing us any favors. Hmm. Every time I said, why don't you do this? Or how could you help with this? They said, oh, we're dealing with bigger things than you even understand. So run along now and risk your lives in sanity. Yeah. I don't know how this could, could not be one of the bigger things, but, and again, what do we know? So Felix, I assume then you go to the phone and make the phone call? Yes, sir. I'll call. Call the house. That's a Matthew's residence. I am Belvedere. It's me. It's Felix. Ah, Master Felix. Master Matthews. You can just call me Felix like normal Belvedere. Jeez. I have a, uh, and this yes, is sir. probably going to be a surprise, but uh, I have a favor to ask. Yes, sir. Uh, in all your, in all your travels, in all of your, all of your adventures. Did you ever run across a man by the name of Sabaggio? Well, it doesn't sound familiar, sir. What is he? Uh, grifter? Uh, other low lives of some sort? I uh, know. Actually, he he was a uh, he used to be a surgeon. He was the butcher of Malay. No, well, quite a title. Sounds like a dangerous man. Yeah. No, I'm afraid I haven't heard of him. Could you ask Hoke or Benson, just in passing? I don't want to alert all the staff. Is it somebody you're looking for, sir? It is. I'm looking for some, uh, I'm either looking for him. He's down in Soho somewhere. He's tucked away. But I've got a feeling he's got some long, long arms that reach all the way through. And I'd rather not end up dead. Let me see what I can do, sir. Thank you, Belvedere. Click. All right, so uh, just got off the phone with Belvedere. <laughs> he doesn't know him right away. He's going to poke around, see if he can't, uh, see if he can't come up with something. He's got a pretty good network of, of people who are still in the business, still in the industry, if you will. So, should did, be okay. Did we have contact information for any of the thieves from the museum? I don't well, recall. Um. I think one of them is no more, and the fellow who sold the um, not enough of the tablets to the shadow man did not seem like anybody with criminal know-how, but kind of a mm. pipsqueak of a clerk who worked in the cellar and what's just the, got into trouble. What's the guy, I can't remember his name, what's the guy that we talked to in the bar? Uh, la um, that was um, Elwick. Holy. Yes, Elwick. John Elwick. He knows where he's at. Yes, I believe that's around the time he urinated on Mr. Matthews' car. Right, but as soon as we left, he'd contact Savaggio. Do you think? And admitted that he gave up a name? I don't think so. Oh, uh, maybe. Hmm. And if he pissed his pants, that means we can scare him. Yeah. I mean, well, for what I'm understanding, this guy 
may be the only one in town that knows where Savaggio is. That we know, that we know. Give my people a couple of, uh, just a little bit. I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll web it out. It'll be all right. Yeah, I have a feeling that if we could have gotten a, an address out of him, we would have done it while he was in the back seat of the car. You were talking, oh, yeah. Earlier you were talking about Ted Williams. There was also Maurice Gibbons, who you guys let off the hook, but he's still working at the museum. Just look at a few other possible contacts. All right, so what what's next? Just gonna wait. <laughs> Appetizers. Um, I think you know uh, one. Th if we if uh, Belvedere and company come through for us, as we hope they will, we need some sort of plan of action. Uh, figure out our arsenal, um, our approach. Uh, we don't know very much except that this fellow is again uh, somewhere in the upper middle echelon of a large criminal conspiracy that can terrify the bejesus out of an otherwise ordinarily uh, honest man like Mr. Elwick into committing really a very severe crime that could cause him the termination of his employment if not real criminal uh, repercussions. So they're scary, is what I'm saying. They're frightening people, and we need to figure out how to, to how to approach that. Not to mention connected with the cold powers that uh, far surpass anything that we've even dreamed of, really. All right, so let's say a couple of hours go by uh, with you trying to figure out what you're going to do. Um, and, uh, and Felix gets a call from Belvedere. Hello, sir. Ahoy, hoy. Um, I have found out a little bit. Um, apparently, there's uh, this this Mr. Savaggio, this doctor, is a uh, criminal surgeon. He does work on the criminal element when they, you know, need help without getting found out by the police. Um. I have an address, which is um, on Brunswick, uh, Bur I'm sorry, Bur Berwick Street in Soho. But I'm also under the impression that although he is an extremely dangerous man, he isn't physically very dangerous. He's not... He's not a big or powerful man, but he surrounds himself with those. And there is a big baddie um, named Claude Bordeaux that you may have to deal with. Uh, the man is a, a monster, a brute. And he's not stupid either. Otherwise, he wouldn't have risen that high in the, the ranks. Does he have family? Not that anyone knows of. Reminds me a bit of the Mafia. Hmm. You got anybody on the inside, Belvedere? Not, not close enough. It seems like everybody I spoke with is terrified of that area of Soho. Okay. Were, we right in a, were we right in assuming that his reach is far? Indeed. Okay. Uh, I, Felix, uh, ask if there's a normal method of making an appointment. Belvedere, is there a normal method of making an appointment? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Well, you'd have to have connections of some sort. Okay. People don't make appointments. People are brought there by other people who know where to go in case of that emergency. They also know that his price is rather high. Okay. This Savaggio fellow, uh, sir, he sounds quite methodically insane. He's, 
he's a sadomasochist. He's terrifying to people. He's a nightmare. Understood. I know there's nothing I can do to tell you not to go there, sir, but be careful. You know where the paperwork is, Belvedere. Yes, I've, I've thoroughly altered it so that my name appears across all of here. <laughs> well, if anything happens, you know everything goes to you. Yes. I appreciate right. your help. Yeah. We'll see you in a bit. I hope so, sir. Click. Well... We have an address, gentlemen, or at least a street. For some reason, I didn't remember to ask for the number of the location. But we do have a street, so hopefully it's not a big street. But it is a very bad part of London. It's Berwick Street in Soho. Mm. A, part of, a part of London that hasn't changed much since the Jack the Ripper days. I'm going to procure myself some clothes for this jaunt. Yes, they're all tired of looking at you sitting there naked while you're eating. <laughs> Some clothes would be a welcome change, Mr. Albright. Yep. I don't know. I can't drink you pretty, Fuller. I tried. <laughs> Gentlemen, um... I'm average. I'm not one to shy away from m many fights or, you know, rough and tumble things. Soho puts my hair standing on edge, especially that area. Um, do all of you actually want to go? Because... Uh, from the way it sounds, we all better go. That's rather my feeling, yes. I don't feel good about it, to be perfectly honest. This, this is very much out of our element. Mine, it's the, especially. It's the seediest part of London. We're chasing a sadomasochist doctor. What could go wrong? Everything. Oh, when you put it that way, let's go. No. Um, I just want to make sure you're fully aware of what you'll be stepping into. Uh, right. Well, I suggest we go packed. Absolutely. That's a given. Yes. Whatever, Whatever weapons we can readily what? procure, I think, are in order. Whatever the 1920s version of pact is. All, all I'm saying is I would not look down upon anyone who chooses not to go and wants to be the backup, so to speak. I just wanted to put it out there. I don't think anybody, I'm, I don't want anybody to feel forced going into this is what I'm getting at. I think that's very reasonable, Mr. Finley. Uh, and yes, especially Vadim, since you've expressed discomfort and a desire to have the Red Turban fellows take the front on this, which was uh, an appealing idea if we weren't at a pinch for time. Uh, perhaps you can act, as Cyrus says, in some sort of observational capacity. Um, perhaps uh, in a taxi cab near the closest police box to our address on Berwick Street. Well, um, you know, one thing that I think would be really beneficial to us is go staggered couple of us go in a little bit later couple more go in and we keep our distance from each other so that, that way if he confronts somebody then you have other people around him that he's not noticing do you guys will have to re refresh my memory do we still have those tablets I've got the I've got the Latin ones, the fragmentitis. Do we have the ones where we can turn ourselves into shadows? No. Uh, we turned those over to the children of tranquility. That's right. We gave those to them too. Shit, yeah. they got a good collection. Yeah, and we I, don't, I don't know if I'm willing to play with magic though. This would be I a perfect wouldn't. time to turn into a shadow though. Yes, because well, it worked out so well the last time it was mm -hmm. cat. Well, that that guy didn't know what he was doing. We're way above his level at this point, aren't we? We've dreamed know. of a wicked statue. We've chased down a wraith. 
We've juiced crows. If we had all four tablets, and we do have rubbings of them, actually, if we want, they're here. If you're volunteering to become a shadow person, Felix, I think we have to advise against it regarding what it seemed to do to the psyche of that gentleman. But it is true that I don't think that Claude Bordeaux uh, is prepared to be attacked by an element that is invisible. But you could pull me back out. I don't think the other fellow had a, someone to pull him back out. Although Vadim did burn him apart, so let's not use that to pull anybody back over. No, yes, we have, there's, there are two tablets that are the spell and two that are the antidote to the spell, and we have rubbings of them all, although I haven't translated them fully. So uh, it, uh, even if you're willing to risk it, it wouldn't be something we could use tonight, I should think. Right. We are That's going it. to need to acquire some clothing that would fit the area. I think we should find the cheapest gin that we could find and splash it about ourselves so we stink. Um, and definitely lots of weapons. You know... I have an interesting idea. Why don't we pick up a couple of, um, you know, dock workers or something like that, give them money to go drink on. So when we go in, there's one of them with us. So that, that way, if someone is watching us, then they also think those people are, you know what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Fuller, are you suggesting a meat shield? Yeah, pretty much. It's not wow. a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Here's something to contemplate. How about an idea of working in a distraction big enough that, if necessary, would uh, attract the uh, authorities? How so? Elaborate. Well, I'm just thinking about some way we can... Um, take attention in case things go bad off of us so that well, we're looking to escape. I would we assume can... the giant pummeling the shit out of us would attract them attention. Hmm. Well, Fuller, we could get a couple of doxy girls too and have them come in with us. So there's a whole group of 15, 20 of us. Get some dock workers, hire some ladies. Yeah, but make... the problem with the ladies are... They know what they're doing. They're out there on the street. They, Nobody they, they sees take... them as a threat. Right, you know, exactly. Burly, you want some big burly dock worker to come in with you, and in that way... No, no, no. We're just a couple of fellas out having a good time. We come in with a bunch, with a bunch of dock workers, we're going to be spotted right away. Well, for extra um, convincibility, we could stab one of the dock workers and then take him to the doctor and say, my mm. friend is bleeding. I don't think that's going to work. I did not intend it in earnest. And the women are easy to move in front of you if you're getting shot at. Well, then I'm going to have to find a heifer. You can address all complaint emails to... Uh... <laughs> Very <laughs> All right. So other than just talk, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I'm going to hell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hmm. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, like, clothes that will make me fit so I don't stand out. Okay, so you want to acquire um, disguises. Yes, we need to go to a, a mission or someplace like that where there's clothing for the poor. Right, right. good give the Give the nuns 10 pounds and take an assortment of derelict clothing. I'm sure Sykes knows where the near, nearest appropriate place is. And gentlemen, remember, for you, those of you who are scholars, don't go shaking people's hands. As soon With as our... they touch those soft hands, they're going to know. I moisturized. 
Right. And men that work in the docks all day have hands of steel. Diverse no, we really need... wrong with good, with good hygiene and good skin care. <laughs> it's a regimen. Right. Cyrus. And a good skin care and good soft hands cost money. Money that... the ratty pair of gloves that I could wear just in case. Mm. Yes, gloves are good. Um... All right, so why don't you all do a good disguise roll? Oh. I'll, I'll just say one of you has to pass. Because he uh, helps the other 61. Person. Would be a miracle. You got a nine? I too. Oh, a nine. wow. I got a 17, but it, I only have a five disguise, so. Fuller saved our butt. Not me. <laughs> oh, I thought you said O2. No, I did. 61. <laughs> I got a nine, and it's a fail. <laughs> yes, but you could afford to buy that with luck, whereas I was off by 40. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll say that, that it takes you about an hour to go down to the mission to uh, find some clothes and various interesting, um, possibly flea-ridden clothes to wear. Um, next, what's your next move? You've got you've got your disguises. Are you going to wait until tomorrow, or you can go in there in the dark? Do we want to hire some meat shields? I figure if we uh, if we liberally apply some gin to our persons and then carry that cheap gin into Soho, we'll be able to make a couple of friends on the street and look the part. Hello, Jim. You want some gin? We could juice a cat. I don't know what that does. Cat piss. No, we don't want to go that far. We're using yeah. it as aftershave or drinking it? Aftershave. <laughs> Both, are, of course. <laughs> Worse. So we probably already have enough. All right, and what about our injury? Who needs what? Um, I mean, you could stab one of us, I guess. Yeah, but like, hurt. wait, let's Damn. wait a while. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with it is, is to stab someone enough to make it look like they're really injured, they would have to be really injured. But if you put a thin cut on the head, heads bleed a lot. You don't have to stab into the head. A nice, long, thin, very thin cut on the head will bleed and bleed and bleed. I'd do that. I'd do that. And we don't have to fool the doctor. We only have to fool Claude to get to see the doctor. Exactly. So was, you know, if, we, if we have a little bit of a bruise and some dirt and a fair amount of blood... It's a question of who sent us and whether there's a password or shibboleth. Uh, but perhaps if we're sufficiently panicked, uh, that will be overlooked. It must happen. Not everyone knows everything. We also have a bunch of money. We can always, that seems to be a good key to many doors. I don't think so. If we go rolling into this place with, you know, fat tons of cash, uh, they're going to think something's up when we're dressed like this and have money to throw around. I'm not suggesting a briefcase. I suggest you gentlemen, don't take your wallet, your billfolds with you. Have your pounds or whatever you have stored in multiple locations on your body and crinkle them up a bit. They can't be bright new pounds, you know. We could just be coming off of a job that we did too. Well, and also, uh, we understand that uh, his prices are exorbitant. So we could present what seems a great deal of money to a poor man and say, look, we've got some money. We'll get more in our Dick Van Dykes. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to use that again. <laughs> it's going to be ripping. Chim chimney. You know, he likes this stuff. He likes the old stuff. Why don't we just find something that uh, 
he might want. What about the book? We're the going fragment? in with muscle. Why not lure him out with something that interests him? The fragmentatus is what you're talking about? The fragmentatus would be fine. I don't think we want to give him something that has spells in it. Right, and, and Felix, the problem with that again is that we don't know if we go if we approach this uh, apparently a very sophisticated lunatic and say, oh, we understand you're in interested in the ancient Near East, then we've rather given away our game. I mean, hey, you know, Felix, if you really think that that would do good, I think that the best way to grab him would be with the rubbings of the scrolls. That would definitely get his attention. Well, but we can't let him have them. Well, as I sip my tea here at dinner, and we all look as though we're coming out of a mission, I find it quite odd that after discussing stabbing one another and cutting each other's foreheads open, then my idea is so ludicrous to just lure him out with a book. <laughs> chip, chip, and all that rot. Hmm. But I'm willing to go in there too. Actually, he may not have a bad, bad idea. What if we're going about this all, all wrong? What if we can't bring him onto our turf? Well, the book is not a dangerous spell. So there's not really any fear of it being used against us. We, well, haven't, a, we haven't a phone number or means of introduction. We have a criminal surgeon at an address. We have an urgent situation that we are continuing to make more urgent by dithering. You don't want to do that too long. Otherwise, they're just going to off him and be done with it. Yes, we might, you know, there's, there, there's no at all if we wait too long. Just worried we're blundering into something that we can't control. You know, having a, a little bit more of this very inexpensive street gin, I find that it's uh, stealing my uh, courage. Hmm. Well, whichever way you want to do. I got the book. If you want to cut my head, I'll let you do that. I might make a good victim as I'm not uh, particularly strong uh, nor particularly um, used to uh, the use of firearms. Oh, that's more, that's a whole lot better if you would choose to get stabbed. Um. Maybe we should Cyrus. go to the chatting wagon. Do a luck roll. Or do a do an idea roll. My worst skill. Uh oh, pass 39. Okay. Um you're you're you've got a lot of plans, you've got disguises, you've got you're thinking about having some way to introduce yourself to the doctor. You haven't even scoped out the neighborhood. That's true. You know, gentlemen, we don't actually even know precisely where we're going. But we can't be driving in the chatting wagon either down through that neighborhood. We might... Did, they still had handsome cabs. Yeah. But I don't know if they'd even... They were in transition to, uh, to autos, but they were still... Uh, yeah, horses were used way up until even... At least in America... Even yeah, to the thirties, I could park outside and we could walk in. Yeah, but you, we can't go into Soho with your vehicle. All right, we need to drive to the nearest safe place to leave the chat and wagon. A walk, yeah. Because why not have hope? Why not have hope drop us off on a corner? That would work too. Right, but from oh, and I thank you to not take liberties with my staff, Fuller. <laughs> You realize, too, that you're not going to be going into a completely empty neighborhood. Gentlemen. It's going to be a busy, rough neighborhood. And I remember yesterday, somebody said, I don't remember, recall the exact conversation, but he has 
his arm, he reaches everywhere. So he's he's got spotters. He's got people out on the corner. Yo, you know, if we roll in there with a blah 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 car, you know, I don't know what what, what you're driving, Rolls Royce or whatever the case may be. We don't have to out. roll in, as you say, on in car. I just had a great idea. This. What's your idea? Are any of you adept at riding a bicycle? Yeah. When I was a kid. Well, think about it. Think about it. A person on a bicycle, an old bicycle, would be very inconspicuous because bicycles are going around all the time, even in Soho. It would be a good way to, <laughs> shall you say, uh, scope out the place, and if you need to get the way, you could go faster than someone on foot. So we show up in a biker gang? No, 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 no. <laughs> you have someone is... appropriately dressed riding a bicycle through the streets. And then we leave our five velocipedes on Berwick Street in Soho without a uh, vehicular escape nearby. We, and then we take Mr. Punchin's unconscious body and strap him across two of the bicycles and ride them in tandem. I think it's a terrifically impractical. I statistic. was only thinking about using the, the, the bicycle for, uh, for scouting, not for trying to get uh, Professor well, Punchin out of there. Th that's why I was talking about the handsome cabs, because we could pay a handsome cab to stay in front and wait for us. Now, I don't know how unusual a handsome cab would be to be seen in Soho. Maybe not such a handsome, handsome cab. Maybe <laughs> an unhandsome cab. I'm sure that area has the equivalent of carts for the working class as opposed to the fancier carts of Uptown. Yes, I'm sure the streets are fairly thick with horse shit as well. But let's get down there and walk around a little and see we need things some boots instead on the of ground. expecting it, anticipating from wherever at the chat and wagon where we're having this conversation while splashing gin on our ragged clothing. All right. Okay. So we'll say it's about six o'clock. Well, wait, we've we used up a couple of hours in there, so seven o'clock. A beautiful Soho dusk. The streets are smoky and shit filled. Uh, and the nearest place we can get out of uh, the chat and wagon where, and start a stroll is how many blocks from Burbrook Street, do you say? Mm -hmm. At least three or four. At least three or four. I hope so, you took off your jewelry. Sorry, I mean to interrupt. Take off your jewelry, your watches, your necklaces, yeah. wedding rings. No, there's give nothing them all really, the hook. Yeah, nothing here but cash and firearms. I've got a, I've got a knife. I don't know what to do with. Um, so, uh, and we can um, let's let's uh, you know let's do a couple of loops around and into Berwick Street before we uh, gash open my pate and uh, try to try to pull our way in. What say? Keep your eyes open, everyone. We're looking for uh, clean idlers and uh, watchful personages, and possibly anyone who appears to be French or Italian. Before we go out, just uh, check how armed are we? Mauser nineteen twelve pistol, Luger. I got my uh, I got my uh, American Colt forty five and uh, my shotgun. I have my razor sharp wit and my escape shoes. Got those too. <laughs> All right. So you drive down uh, and park on the you know outskirts of Soho, and um, even this time of the evening, it's busy. Yeah, go ahead. Is some is one of Felix's um, butlers in the car? The car is not unattended, is it? It's unattended. I don't know about that. Well, we didn't leave anything in there. I'll if, stay with the if car. If somebody gets in there, they're going to smell that back seat and they're going to leave the car. <laughs> no, not here. In case they steal it, 
and we don't have to worry about anybody ever knowing what happened back there anyway. But if we get to the car and it's not there with a the body. I'll stay with the car. You see what I'm getting? Park it near the uh, nearest police outlet, police station. For relative safety. But if Vadim wants to stay in the car and be a getaway driver, you know, if in in the best case scenario, we're going to be calling the police to come and clean up Dr. and and Mr. Bordeaux, and we won't need a, a getaway vehicle, but we don't know about the best case scenario. I trust at least Scotland Yard will listen once we've actually incapacitated the mad scientist. That's true. All right. So you you park the car and you get out. You start to walk. Are you going to walk all together? There's only three of us, four of us now. Okay. I'm staying with the car and keeping an eye out. A very sharp eye. You guys okay with walking together? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I think uh, we want to look a little bit tougher than we are. And so being in a, in a group of men. Well, at one time, the area might have been a lot better. Uh, there are the remnants of a lot of townhouses and brownstones and things like that. Their streets are a little too narrow, a little too old-fashioned. They're cobblestones, so they're a little you know, taxing to walk on for uh, a long period of time. Uh, there are people, there are people all over the place, people walking here and there, people just hanging out. Um, uh, as you, as you walk, uh, down one of the streets, there is a group of women, uh, up ahead of you. And as you approach, they begin to make all sorts of interesting um, propositions, if you will. Go on. Well, uh, you know. (laughs) They're obviously all prostitutes. And rather aggressive ones. What do you guys do? You know, <laughs> not now, my love. We've got business to do. Oh, we'll see you on. later, Missy. All right. Um, there are a number of pubs in the area. Uh, they sound pretty rough. So as you're walking, you you do you finally find this um, Benwick Street. And it's fairly narrow street. There are uh, there are a number of three or four story townhouses along the way that are in somewhat disrepair on the outside. None of them look great. Um, you do notice that maybe the third one in, which you don't really approach, you guys kind of hang out there, that you notice a couple of thugs uh, in the front uh, uh, paver stone area of the house. They're smoking. And uh, you also notice coming around the corner, way down at the other end of the street and walking towards them is a big guy. Um, he's in a, a suit, uh, but I mean, it looks like a, not a cheap suit, but a fairly decent suit. And he's walking in your direction, but he'll get to the house before he gets to you. What do you guys do? Keep an eye on him. We'll find out where the address is. I whisper to the other guys, how about I walk up and say, Claude, is that you? And just pretend I'm somebody else and see if it's even him. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Cyrus. Uh, uh, the only difficulty is then, uh, you know, you won't be able to come in with us on the big salvation uh, once I we've seen you. I and we were warned he was a smart fella. You're right, you're right. We say we, uh, now we've got an idea where the door is. 
So we take a spin around the block, see what the back of the building is like, if we can see it, uh, and get ready for the big uh, bash on the noggin. Tom, you say, are there any trash cans, anything about? Sure. Yeah, lots of them. Lots of garbage and trash cans and bags and rubbish against the buildings. I'd like to, as we're walking by, now you all, if you care to continue on, go around and make your circle around the block. But me, I want to somewhat stumble and fall across the street and land somewhat restfully upon some garbage and look like a passed out drunkard against the trash can. That way I can keep an eye on exactly where it goes in and whatever comes in and out. But don't mind me, I'm just a drunkard passed out in the trash can with the All rush. Right. <laughs> Doesn't well, look a good plan. I have no objection to it. I think it won't make sense. Uh, will you uh, be joining us for the entrance, or is it just going to be the three of us now? I'll be there for the entrance. You're going to come back around. This is the door to go in that he's, right, he's right. almost to, I believe. Right, right. We haven't seen anything, anybody else that looks like a, uh, eyes actively. You've seen three at this point, but anybody walking around on the streets out there could have been mm -hmm. eyes. And even though you're dressed this way, you're still strangers to the neighborhood. Right. And um, but keep uh, in mind, keep in mind, if there is eyes, there's no cell phone. So they have to actually go and talk to him or scream. In either case, we will pretty much figure that out. All right. Uh, and what, what percentage of people around us are obviously inebriated? Well, there's a few. There's a bar actually right near where you're standing. Now we were going to go around the back, correct? Yeah, I want to go. I want to circle the block and come back this way. Felix, okay. why don't you circle with us just in case we find a, a easier access to the back? And then if not, you just go right back around. Just a once around and see, and then if not, do the trash thing. Rubbish. It's rubbish, Cyrus. For fuck's sake, stay in the row, please. Christ. Uh, are uh, other I'm people visi are other people visibly drinking? Mm. Well, they, people carry bottles, or are they just sort of around the bar? There's a lot of boozy people. Yeah, there's a lot of boozy people around the bars. You, you do see a few bums, you know, in the alley and stuff like that. Um, so you're going to walk around towards the back of the property. Um, and uh, Felix, were you going to go with them or are you going to do the garbage thing? I guess I'll walk around with them one time, make a lap, and then I'll, when I come back, they can shove me in the garbage can or the rubbish. And Tom, are the houses built up together or is there alleyways? Well, some of them are and some of them aren't. In this case, his, his house kind of sets by itself. Okay. At one time, these were better places. Um, so as you're walking around the side of the place, you can see that there is a, uh, a, a low wall that runs all the way around it. Um, uh, and you can see that inside that there is a kind of a flagstone patio area. Uh, there is obviously a back door and you don't see people back there. Um, it's it's overgrown with weeds and stuff like that. But but I'm looking it, for lights and windows, open windows, barred windows. Um, there are lights on inside. Yeah. Most Any of them them. have bars on them? No. Okay. Um, so as you guys were walking, uh, uh, up ahead of you, um, five guys come out of a bar and they're obviously drunk and they're obviously laughing loudly and they're uh, they're carrying on and they're cavorting 
and uh, one of them sees you. And when he does, he's like, "Eh, hey, now what is this that we got going on over here? I apologize for my English accent as well. And he sort of gets the attention of his, his buddies. And they start walking to him. He says, well, now, we haven't seen you around this neighborhood before. Fairly new. Yeah, we're just uh, having a longer stroll than usual tonight. Add ourselves a little party for my, uh, this, uh, my mate is a Yank in town. Add ourselves a bit of a time. A Yank? Oh, well, I hate Yanks. It's oh. not going to go very easy for you here. Me too. That's why I'm here. <laughs> ah. He's an all right, mate. Listen up. You guys are new to the neighborhood. This is the way it goes. If you want to get past us, uh -huh. you got to pay the toll. Uh -huh. And what's that then? I do not know what six with a little S after it. Is that six sterling? Yeah, I believe so. Six pounds sterling. That sounds right. That'll be six pounds sterling. That's rather steep for a dirty rattle like this, isn't it? And he pops out a knife. He says, now, when you oh, say six you sterling, is that per or is that for the whole group? <laughs> I'm like Matt for use. What, so, you got more? <laughs> yeah, I just want to know if I need to turn around. So an, you're going to give each of us six sterling now? Mates, this is great. This jerk is giving us six sterling each to walk down the block. He, he walks up to you and he's like, so you think you're a smart guy, aren't you? Pow, he hits you right in the face. I, Here we go. Now we've got a real injury. Except that he didn't get a very good roll, so he doesn't hit you hard enough. He's, he's, been, he's, been, he's a bit pissed. Swing my walking stick at him. Okay. Hey, your walking stick a little fancy for down here? Uh, well, I peed on it a little bit. And <laughs> <laughs> put some crow juice on it. <laughs> he's nothing he can't mess up with a bit of crow juice. Oh, I can just picture that in my head. A 30, 3 zero, and I'm going to spend three luck to make it a hard success. Okay, because I got a 3 zero too. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then if I spend, oh, wait, three, it is already a hard, so I'll just spend one, making it a 29. Okay. Because 33. Can, spend, can you spend luck in combat? Yes, yes, just not on damage or luck rolls or damage. That's what I was thinking of as damage. All right. So um, because you were attacking, you win. So uh, you clobber him. And of course, that's the signal for all of them to immediately attack all of you. So it becomes a big, loud brawl. Here we sudden. go. So... Uh, I can't talk my way out of every damn thing. You guys have the advantage. So, Cyrus, you're going to go last because you 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 went really went first. Is that guy down now? Uh, yeah, you hit him pretty hard. He's he's knocked down, and he's he went down like when he hits the ground, he just lays there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the guy in front of me, I'm going to kick him in the balls. All right. Ooh. How'd you do? I got a five. Now that okay. makes it a critical success, but I'm All not right. looking forward to this. Well, you guys aren't drunk either, and they're really drunk. So uh, go so ahead. We, um, what's your? Will you hit him with your fist? So yeah, D three, D three. Kick him in the balls. No bonus damage. Okay. Three. Okay. Yeah, that's because you kicked him in the balls. So he's keeling over. Um, uh, Felix. And I have no bonus damage, by the way. Do I still have my gin bottle? Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to bust that son of a bitch on the sidewalk, and I'm going to stick one of them. Okay, go ahead. 
sheet. That's a 75. He got an 02. So he was a little less drunk. He dodged out of the way and he hit you with his elbow. And we'll say that that does. You shouldn't have bent down the brakey. You should have just hit him with it. He hits you for three points of damage. So he cracks you pretty hard in the face. Vadim. Vadim's at the car. Oh. I'm at the car keeping an eye on things. All right. So Vadim's not so dim. Oh, I've got to go. Um, I forgot my, my fighting brawl has improved since uh, I fought with the Shadow Man. That's right. Still not very good. Um, Cyrus, uh, one of the other guys, because you, your guys are kind of outnumbered. Um, what did I say? Five? Five yeah, guys? I think so. So you knock down his friend. He's going to try to hit you. Uh, what are you going to do? Dodge or try to hit no, him? No, I'm just going to swing at him. Okay. You only got a 50, 59, actually. So I roll against them yeah. now, or yeah. okay? Yeah, you're trying to fight back. Oh, five. Yeah, you you clobber him right in the face. Go oh. ahead. What is that? Uh, 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 it's D six plus damage bonus. Five plus one D four for damage. One, so six points total. Okay, so you hit him pretty hard, and then he goes down. Uh, let's see, Fuller. Reginald yes. was. Yeah, oh, I have Reginald. a Reginald. Uh, I assume I have one fellow left, uh, and I'm going to yeah. try to get him in the kidney. Yeah, no, bad roll. Sixty-five for thirty-two. Okay, he got a thirty-five, mm. uh, so he manages to connect, and he does. He does one point of damage to you, so he shoves you really good and hard snaps you back. Okay, so now we're back to Fuller. Okay. Stop somebody. A 20. I got a 35 skill, so I got 20. Okay, well you got the guy who is already down. He can't even defend himself, so you give him a good swift stomping and uh, do some damage to him. Another three points. Okay. He's not it, moving at this point. His balls are f fully juiced. Uh, let's see who's next. Uh, Felix. I'm letting that process for just a moment. Okay, well, he punches you while you're watching it. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting a full ball juicing from Fuller over there. But... We've got one still standing, correct? Yeah. Now the guy that hit you with his elbow. Yes. Isn't he quite the chap? I'm going to try to... No. 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 Felix, don't do it. Yes, Felix, do it. I'm going to try to stab him again. And that time I got a 23. Okay. He only got a 41. Would it be a brawl for the stabbing? Yes. Yes. 25, uh, is that 23 on 25. That's a normal success. Okay. I, I failed. So I stick him. Okay. What kind of knife do you have? It's a broken gin bottle. Oh, okay. Quite unsanitary. Okay. All right. So okay. you, uh, you uh, let's see how bad your damage is. Really got no idea what even to roll for that. It was just kind of a makeshift weapon. Well, do a, do a 1d4 plus 2. Okay. Plus your damage. Oh, I've got no damage bonus. I'm just a wee lad. Okay. Well, that's 3. Roll okay. to 3. You say we'll plus 2. Well, say you whack him across the face with it. So I slash him. You slash him with it. And, uh, and he goes down, My face! My bloody face! Indeed, it is a bloody face at this point. <laughs> so you've kind of got them all down on the ground. What are you guys going to do next? Rifle Should their we... pockets. Six pence. I mean, six sterling, please. Has this I... attracted much of a crowd? Not really. People have watched. 
and then just walked away. Mm-hmm. The rifle is damn pockets, man. <laughs> I think he owes us a thing or two. All right. Now, do a fine treasure roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the most you're going to find is a couple of pence. And... Fourteen! <laughs> <laughs> the question here, I, I, was, I was looking to, at this low wall and thinking we didn't have to try to get past the bouncer. And now we've got this, got five moaning, in some cases, writhing enemies that we've left here inconveniently right in the right place. Now we could grab one of them and rush him around the block and say, our man's been injured the one who's least conscious and most damaged looking. I mean, even cut him up a little more once we bring him to the door. Even fella, even Felix's bloody faced guys might allow us to take him to a surgeon and he probably needs it. He might lose that eye, but we've got to decide in seconds. It makes sense. Let's grab old bloody face there and move him around the corner. Don't touch me. All right, there's a medic around here. We'll take you to the medic. We know him. You've got a right convincing injury. Much better than my minor head wound was going to be. And again, we apologize to all the peoples of the United Kingdom. <laughs> does, does he come willingly? Um, he's really drunk. So, yeah, he doesn't put much of a, uh, much of a fight when you've got him by the arms and... We can give him a bit of a tap on the back of the head, too. I got my, that, if he's going to be a problem, problem, we can cut him deeper. As you are taking him around the corner, you can see that, I mean, he's drunk, but this slow sort of wave of recognition comes over him as to where you're taking him, and he starts to fight you. I ain't going there, no way. What's you want to lose your eye, Van? You want to lose your eye? I'd rather lose my eye than anything else. All right, Van. Yeah, let's let him go, then. Let him loose. Well, at that point, he's like, you people are crazy. And he, he running the other direction, stumbling. Probably falls a couple of times. Well, I think we verified that's the right address for a butcher, huh? Well, we could try. Uh, we could try the our, our Mr. Our friend Six Sterling, uh, might. and make sure that he's thoroughly unconscious with a couple more kicks to the skull. Do a spot hidden for me. You can True. all. All of it. Thirty. Had we gotten to the corner of Berwick Street when he fled? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I made a standard. You'd actually started around the corner, and that's when he realized where you were taking him. I made yeah, a I'm, standard nothing major. Mine too. Thirty-five. Oh, sorry. I rolled a ninety. I'm just watching the guy okay. run. I just had a standard. Okay. Well, those of you who got a standard, you become aware that the thugs on the porch have noticed you. Now you're too far away for them to actually notice much about you, and it probably just looked like a bit of a brawl, and then people, well, the guy ran. Um. Well, now we have a brawl that they witnessed. If one of us is bleeding a little bit more, we might it might be perfect. They well, saw he saw us fighting. Who's got Felix. the best visible injury? Felix got it. a blow. I was going to say, do we want to do some first aid or not? It's not they like they've got a sign outside, like they're saying that there's a doctor here. So how would we even know that there was a doctor there? Uh, the, uh, they. Uh, they don't give you a look like they're concerned for your health. Right, of they look course. Like they're concerned whether you're coming too close and they're going to kill you. <laughs> I say maybe it's time to retreat. We know where the place is now. We've got a feel for what's here. Let's continue our walk around the circle there, to, around the block, and go ahead and get back down with Vadim. I could really use two of those things where they put them up your nose so you can still breathe. All right, well, we don't want to retrace our steps and find the four remaining foes. We know what the back looks like. Maybe we circle around the other way. Um, like a big S. Yeah. Uh, although, again, 
It might be now or never. Oh, you got popped right in the face. So he's got some, he's got a black eye, bloody nose, tooth loose. I mean, yeah, you got three got damage me, in, the, in the face. He got me pretty good, yes. Really keyed me up. You got a fat lip. I mean, we can always just go. We're here. Worst case, we take another ass whooping. I don't think they're going to do ass whooping. I think they'll shoot us. But we can shoot back. Yeah, yeah but the point... Are you guys of... standing there contemplating this? No, one? no. We said we'd walk the okay. other... If we went this way around the block and had the fight, we'll go this way around the block to get to the back of the house. Okay. This happened in the back of the house. No, it was once we turned, wasn't it? When we turned no, the corner, it was in the front. You you started to you took the right around the corner. Oh, okay. I misunderstood then because I thought you said in the back there was a like no lights on and a door and all that kind of stuff. So I misunderstood. Well, there was that, but that's when you met the drunks, and then the drunks got in a fight, and you grabbed one of the drunks. And oh, I thought that was in the back. Started to take him up to the front. So the, the, the guards or whatever are at the front door mm -hmm. or the back door. Well, for all you know, there's others inside. You just, right. those guys are sitting outside smoking. Um, uh, <laughs> somebody laughing downstairs. Um, uh, what are you guys going to do? next well you know we could go back to vadim drive right up to the door and as we pass this guy do a drive-by we're gonna have to face him one way or the other to get to get any farther well the two uh, blokes outside are not um are not the the fellow we were warned about so he would be well aware that we were armed and without and probably has preparations since this gentleman has a number of enemies. True. Um, I would very much like to survive this evening. Uh, can we get to the rear of uh, Savaggio's uh, building without passing the, our uh, attackers? If we... Having circled partially one way, if, circled. If you wait a bit, they're probably picking themselves up and stumbling off yeah. at that point. Yeah. You know, I am, I am increasingly of the opinion that it might be best to attempt a stealthy entrance to the rear rather than attempting to bluff our way through the front. The only thing is, is do you not think they would have uh, eyes in the back too? It's a, certainly a concern. Although it seems as though their reputations are sufficient to keep most people at bay. I don't know. Are, how willing are we to risk our well-being to save Mr. Punchin and possibly prevent an apocalypse? Well, the apocalypse part I'd like to prevent, but Punchin, I could give a shit less, really, if he lives or dies. Just I don't want to give someone else the key to everything in this world. Yes, Mr. Punchin is a bit of a shell of a man, although I did promise his roommate. Um, all right, who votes for the back? Who votes for the front? I'll go to the back. All right. Stealth uh, takes it. Where's the low, where was the low wall? The low wall. Yeah, goes all the way around the property. We go, we go to the far corner from where we had our events. We, uh, I've got pour some gin onto, onto Felix's injuries. We we'll give it 15 minutes and see if there's anybody left lying on the ground. Yeah. Felix, would you like some right proper first aid? I should probably have some. Thank you, Fuller. <laughs> yeah, I'll do first aid on him. Ooh, a six. That flea ridden handkerchief you stuck into his nose. I got Nothing. a six, so that's still, you know, that's still pretty good. Okay, you get one point back. 
of damage. Um, Thank you, Fuller. You're most welcome. So uh, after 15 minutes or so, that crowd is gone. There's still people out there. You know, you're not all alone on the street. Do any of us have a, do any of you gentlemen still have a, an intact bottle, an intact gin bottle? I assume so. I believe yes. I think yours is the only one that's shattered. Yes, yes, yes. How do you all feel about a Molotov cocktail? A what? Well, it's a little thing that I've been working on in my garage. It's, you fill a bottle full of a flammable liquid. You then tear a piece of cloth and you dip it in like a, like a almost like an old uh, oil lamp. Yes. You follow so far. Mm -hmm. Well, then you ignite the cloth. And it becomes mm -hmm. somewhat of a lantern, and you could light a room or whatever. But what it's really good for is you throw the bastard against something, it busts the bottle, the flammable liquid goes everywhere, and the flaming cloth ignites the flaming liquid or the non flaming liquid, but flammable liquid. Next thing you know, the whole damn place is inflamed, and nobody's any the wiser. Which would oh. make them have to leave the building. Right, and if they want punch in skin, which we think they do, they've got to bring punching out with them. Otherwise, all of the riding goes up in smoke. This is a one, two, a three-story building. Three stories. Brick. Right three-story brick. That's the only problem is a brick part. But Keep if this we get the window... Keep we this in mind. If we, if we draw the ones inside out, and we had the ones that are already outside... That means a larger crowd that we have to attend. Right, but also, uh, you know, a great deal of confusion and chaos and distraction. Oh, and easily disappear in a large crowd. People come around and watch it. Lots of people. Uh, to, my, to my thinking, it's not a bad idea. If one of us can get it through a window and we can get a proper fire going. If we could get a, a couple of, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. A no, couple of them, a couple of them through. No, whoever throws good gets a window and the rest of us can fire it in. Get a proper uh, evil doctor toasting up. Oh. From the looks of me, I throw like a girl. Uh, I'm not too bad at throwing. We got three bottles of gin. Three chances to get something going. Can't Terry have to run away as soon as we throw him? Just walk across the street, sit on the stoop and watch. Well, we want to be on the front side, I think, after we... Right, right, but... I, I want you guys... Uh, I want to make you do a luck roll. And I'm sure the door is wood, so you'd have to hit one on the Not door. I meant an uh, intelligence roll. 16 on 80, so it's, a, it's, it's the best one you can get. The 16 is uh, the word that I'm looking for. Extreme. It, That's it, the one. It, it, okay, for those of you who've got really good rolls. I felt. It seems to me that people who live in London in the 1920s would be well aware of how easily the entire fucking city can burn to the ground if it catches on fire. So consider that. <laughs> as I said, be murdering thousands of people. <laughs> as I said, this is the way Call of Cthulhu games go. So, right. And at the very least, we can assume that anyone who saw three gentlemen committing gleeful arson uh the locals would mob us before the flames engulf the entire block i think that's the, too busy putting out this shit that's the downside i figure actually i didn't figure it i figured nothing i wrote an 87. yeah it was, was a 67. <laughs> all right plan c plan d plan also gin barely can be ignited on a fire. 
Oh, this is some oily, weird gin, I think. Well, that's, if it's cheap, then it's watered down, so it's even less flammable. Or there's methanol in it, and it's more flammable. Have you heard about, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> so, that, uh, bathtub gin. So here we are at the back. We've got no plan. We've realized we can't set the place alight with your molete whatever. It's called a Matthews cocktail. I mispronounced it earlier. Oh, the Matthews cocktail. <coughs> so that's out. Uh, they're prob I just think we're going to die either way. Could we not say it's out completely? Could it just be lower on the you know, lower in the progression. Let's keep it in its back burner, if you will, if there's burners. Ah, I made a pun. Yes, you did. <laughs> <coughs> I put myself in time out for that. All right, no more timeouts. Figure out what you want to do. <laughs> if we go in guns blazing, at least one of us is going to be severely wounded. If we go try and kick in the back door, it will be similar with a slightly better chance. Or three makes me sound like the bad guy again, but this guy's probably, he might be dead already, and we could wait and contact the, the, the children of tranquility, get a couple of their guys to come and bolster our ranks, and then kick in the door and hope one of them gets shot and not us. That's my three ideas. Besides burning down the house. That was Cyrus's idea. I was willing to do it. We still burn the son bitch to the ground. I don't mind. I could just go knock on the door. It's been pretty good with everywhere else we went. Yeah, but you can't get close to the door. I got a bloody nose, Cyrus. Yeah, I'd be completely surgeon. friendly, I'm sure. Oh, my split lip needs that a stitch. That's Can I do the mad surgeon? I don't know. He's untouchable. We're just sitting, there. we're walking around out here. These clothes stink. I reek of gin. I can't smell myself because my nose is swollen shut. Or Someone one other. hit me with his elbow right in the face. Luckily, Fuller put me back together a little bit. But he's with his handkerchief, who God knows where that's been. Well, one other bad idea. We go get into another fight, bust somebody up really, really, really bad, and bring them to the door and say, we need the doctor. Do we, are we even supposed to know the doctor's here? That's the thing. Well, uh, our, our um, slash face oh, friend who? certainly did. Who sent you? Guido. Oh. It'll either backfire or it'll work. I mean... Well, oh. Guido, of course, is a puddle of goop, but we can say that we learned about the doctor's location from Guido last summer. Or, or we can just burn the one who actually told us his name. What do we give a shit anyway? What's his name? Who? Elric. 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 Yeah, but I don't think he's high enough on the food chain to know about the doctor he's got free children he's got yeah, free children you got no art reginald gets it where you at cyrus you're gonna come aboard no you know. i was again it oh clearly i uh, lost something in translation he's got free children i don't care about his three kids or his wife but i think that he's too low on the food chain to have any pull at the door I'd give him up in a heartbeat. Fuck him and his three kids. But it won't get us access. Hmm. All right, let's do it. In fact, when this is all over, I'm going to go back to his house and whoop him one, one last time just in front of his kids. Right, well, you've just been in a fight. You're feeling a bit frisky. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, cut up me at a bit. And then... We can say that we know about the place because of Guido. And, I cut uh, his head. <laughs> ow. Ow. Vadim. 
Um, you've been sitting in the car for about an hour. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to do? Do I know there's anything uh, going on? Anybody who looks suspicious? You're not close enough to see anything out there. Right. How far away are they? About, Give or take. About, well, four blocks to Soho. So they're somewhere oh. in Soho. They could be anywhere. In there. Well, that's what I was fixing to say is if we're going to storm the fortress, we might want to go get Vadim. He has a shotgun. Yeah. Time to call in the reinforcements. Let's get them. Before you cut his head. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I'll walk back up. I know where you guys are. Hang out where you're at. I'll go back and get Vadim. And we'll we're we gonna drive back in here. What do you think? Bring the car. Park the car on top of the guys out in front. All right, I'm gonna go get Vadim. We're gonna walk back in here. So give me a few minutes, right? All right. This is me walking. All right. Uh, Felix, do a... Hey, Vadim. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> you, you lagged there. Your, your body froze and then it went... <laughs> um, as you are walking, I want you to do a spot hidden. 51 and... 65, just a normal. Okay. Um, as you're walking uh, for a couple of blocks, you're pretty sure somebody's following you. Fucking great. How close are they? They're about a block away from you, but they seem to, it, they, uh, they're hanging in the shadows. They're obviously, you know, because he goes into a doorway and he watches you and then he'll, as you move, he'll move. Hmm. I'm going to turn around and walk directly towards him. All right. So he takes a couple steps towards you. And as he does, he pulls out a knife. Okay. Now I'll turn back around and I'll start walking away from him. Um, he starts walking faster towards you. I walk faster towards Vadim. <laughs> Vadim, where you're sitting, you suddenly notice Felix come around a corner and he seems to be pursued by a guy with a knife. Okay. Okay. Uh, Felix is almost running at this point. Uh -huh. All right, I'm going to um, going to step out where I can be seen. Shotgun, so that the guy could see the shotgun. Okay. When you do that, you see the guy suddenly put on the brakes. And, and I go. And he takes a good look at you. And uh, as Felix catches up to where you are, and you see him sort of look at your car, and then he goes back the way that he came. I think we've been, uh, as they say, made. Yeah. Many thanks for saving me right there. I didn't realize yeah. he was following me till just two blocks. Otherwise, I'd have taken him for a loop-de-loop. Well, that's the best thing I could think of on a moment's notice. What's the situation? Well, you might as well keep your shotgun out because we got to walk all the way back. Is there something you can tuck it under? Can you like slick it under? Yes, under I got shirt? my overcoat. Very well. It, we're going to have to walk back exactly where that guy just came from. So that's probably not the best. Uh, we're probably not in the best situation. How, but How guarded is the building? It's very guarded. Mm -hmm. I was going to burn the son of a bitch down, but we thought better of it. And by we, I mean Reginald and some magical voice from above apparently mm. says that the whole town would burn. I've been taking Who some knew? time to do some thought in this situation. Uh, just curious, how close are the buildings to one another over there? 
Yeah, quite close. Close enough to where if you burn one, they all burn and everybody will be mad at you. All right. Well, um, burning may not be out of the question, but I've got uh, something to pass along to you. I don't know if we can implement it or not, but given the situation here, but uh, have you ever thought maybe coming in from the top? Like a chimney, going in a chimney. Maybe these buildings have a roof access. Oh. of some kind. If not, we can make our own access and it would uh, be away from where these sentinels are. And if there's no ready access up there, that kind of guarantees that nobody's on top of the building. Hmm. I'm sure we could find some way in to pry up a, a, some tiles or something, if nothing else. We should probably get to the other red guys in the group, though. And then we right. can all discuss it among, amongst ourselves there. Right. Do you think we should uh, take the car through? This car, from the looks of it, this car is not long for this world. No. And to be true. honest with, to be honest with you, it's probably better that way. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's just an absolute train wreck in that back seat. Right. May I suggest we go through another uh, path to get get there? I only know the one we came. I mean, it's pretty squared off city though, so maybe we could take an extra turn. But the guy is. Uh, the guy is is that was following me. He could be anywhere. He was tucking in doorways all the way back. Yes. So well, they I'm know that they're that somebody's been poking around and somebody pulled a shotgun on him. So they're going to be talking to their people. So yeah, they're probably going to be bolstering the uh, entrances. That's what I'm saying. It, if we can actually, look at if the, it's made anyway, if the car is made, and it's a burner, if you want to call it that, why walk back? You got my keys. Yeah. Come on, I'll drive. All right. You can ride shotgun in the <laughs> passenger seat. What a pun. What a pun. That's two in a mere matter of moments. Yes. I really should be ashamed of but myself. If we have, but if we have ability to work around this, may I suggest we try a uh, upper approach on things? I stabbed a man with a bottle in his face. Things have gone very bad already. All right. And that's not um, even the worst that's happened, but I'll let the others tell their own stories. But let's mm. go. You did take the nameplate off the number plate off the car, yes. No, I didn't. I didn't think anyone was gonna be following me back to the damn car well, for let's take a moment to do that. I didn't plan for all this. Or at least cover it up. It's all gonna be gone anyway. Just all right. It this car was stolen <clears throat> about three weeks ago. That's that's good by me. Let's help. let's go take care of our fellows. Yes. All right, so as the three of you are still staking out the house, um, as I say, there are other people walking about, but you suddenly notice this kind of youngish looking thug, and he's moving fast, and he looks like he's heading towards Savaggio's. Um, he he has he hasn't crossed the street yet or gotten to the you know the to uh, what's the street Berwick Berwick yet, but he looks like he's urgently heading towards the house, and he's in a suit. Yeah, kind of a, a ratty looking suit. It looks like he if he's a member he's a kind of a on the uh, low end. Right, they didn't leave the porch themselves. They sent some. And you and you definitely know that he's coming from the area that Felix was heading. Right. Right. And he's right. Well, Felix, the I, Felix said ideal tossing the Molotov sounds pretty safe to me at this point. I mean, we can't hide. We might as well go in in force because they already know we're here. And, you know, the Molotov, if nothing else, could take out one or two people to give us a helping hand. Now, would it be too metagamey for us to try and stop that guy? Or do we kind of think something's up with him running? I don't want to... All you know is that he's probably heading for Savaggio's. You don't know why, except that he came from the, the direction that Felix... But he right. looks young yeah. enough that we might be able to pummel him and get some information out of? I mean, I guess we can... Uh, extrapolate that uh, 
he had a run in with Felix since we just sent Felix that way. And if, he's coming back in a hurry. I don't think we're going to be able to intercept him because we, as I understand it, let's see, broadly speaking, we've got some rough shaped city block and we've got Savaggio's house somewhere here. We went around this way and had a brawl and we went around this way and saw the back. And now we're kind of hanging out here so we can see things. And Felix went off that way. Oh, none of you can see that, sorry. But anyway, it let's, seems like we'd be far, far away from intercepting him, except let, you shot him, sorry. Well, let's, let's put it this way. I mean, you'd have to make an effort to catch the guy. But if he saw something and he's going to tell Savaggio, the jig is up. So then I could, if I took a sprint towards him Ooh. to intercept him, could I? He doesn't look like he's expecting anyone coming at him from the So place. I could just maybe tackle him into an alleyway or something? Okay. Can you do it without the watcher seeing you? Uh, you know, at this point, it is what it is. Hey, yeah, I'm wait maybe. a minute. Who if, watches the watchers, though? If this guy goes in and says, hey, we got people out here, Savaggio is not going to come out. He's right. going to that big brood out. That way, we can take him out first. Well, we could, we could still get him out after that. I, I'll, I'll see if I can tackle this guy. If not, then let him go in and run upstairs, whatever. All right, do a do a Dex. Oh. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I have an eighty Dex, so I'm quick. Okay. Yeah, I know that. I think that you're going to get him because he's not looking for anyone ahead. He's looking for somebody following him. Um. So go ahead. Yeah, roll for a brawl. Bonus dice for. Blind yeah, go roll? ahead. Yeah, I'll give you a bonus dice. All right, 52 on the first roll, uh, 65 on the second. Both of them are successes. Okay. So he practically walks into your arms. You know, he thinks uh, he does see you, but he thinks you're just going to pass. Oh, and, just... Uh, and you grab, and he like, hey, Cl like clothesline him is what I wanted to do. Okay. So you've got him, and what do you do with him? Do you pull him into a... Pull him into an alleyway. All right. You pull him into an alleyway. What do the, the other two do? You've seen well, this just happen. Uh, just right. Is, you know, following, uh, not running, following Cyrus to keep an eye on what's going while trying to make sure that we're not inside of the people in front of the building. Same. So when we see him yanked into an alley, we'll be there in a, in a moment. Okay. Um, Felix and Vadim, you have removed the license plate. What are you going to do? <laughs> Base your decision not on what you've heard them do. <laughs> Heading on over, I guess. All right. I'm driving. Uh, I'm driving slowly, though. Kind of creeping. Trying to kind of keep an eye out for the fellow that was following me, see if I can find where he was or where he is. All right. Um, since you're looking to a spot hidden with a bonus dice. 29. 8. It's past. I got a regular, or I got a hard extreme. success, and he's gone extreme there. All right. So you notice. Um, Reginald and uh, Fuller uh, moving towards an alley about a block away from Savaggio's. And uh, they're, they suddenly turn and they're looking down the alley. And you've got an extreme, you also notice there's a couple people on the street looking at your car. Shit. Is Vadim's no, shotgun visible? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Um, we're attracting so, attention. Let's go in the alley. I assume we're going to see headlights before. Car won't fit in the alley. Oh. All right. So we're just stuck. 
What do you do? Drive it in? No, you can stay on the street, but you can't turn down the alley that we went into. Oh, I'm fine. We're heading toward. Right. Uh, it's dark enough. The headlights must be on. Yeah, probably. And there are not a lot of cars, shiny, nice cars driving around down here. Well, and it's not completely dark. Yeah, no, there's. You haven't seen any cars driving around. Right. All uh, right. Um, so, uh, Fuller, you see about Cyrus. I'll speak to them. We can have a quick confab. So, did you see someone? I think someone spotted you and was going back to tell them. You're up here by the car with me now, Reginald. Mm. Yeah. Yes. I was followed, and luckily, Vadim was back there with his Thunder Maker, and we were able to scare him off, but he came. Came tumbling back this way. Yeah, it was pretty fast too, but Cyrus has got one. I think though that we've, uh, I think it might be time to leave Soho. Maybe we'll take the kid with us. You've got their runner. All right, Cyrus got mm. him. Let's get out. Why don't you let him go inside? Well, say why. Because hopefully after that, the brute will come out of the door. And if no one here is expecting a car to be here, I can run the bastard over and then we don't have to worry about him anymore. Molotov him. We're going to make a very big splash in Soho tonight. Cyrus, uh, you have the kid around the neck. Um, you suddenly hear a snick. What do you do? I didn't know I was muted. Like a knife click? Yeah. Then I'll wrench him by the neck up off the feet and shake him. I'll be like, I'll break your fucking neck. Drop the goddamn knife or you're dead. Um, and I squeeze like he's like never been squeezed before. Uh, he is going to try to bring the knife up like that. I'll, he's going to, within five or six seconds, he's blacking out. So Okay, well, uh, he's going to gonna both do brawls. Uh, you're trying to grapple, so yeah, he can't hit you with it. Thirty-one. So you've got him with one arm, and he brings that knife up like that. You could probably just yank it right out of his hand. Yeah, and I'll bring it down to his eye, and I'll be okay. like, "Should I carve out the left or the right?" Um, at that point, he's passed. He passes out. All right. What do you do? Waiting to see what these guys do. Well, I'm coming up behind you, Felix. And I'll pocket that knife. Okay. So I have the kid on my arm. He's unconscious. I got, I'm just holding him by the hair at this point. All right. So, what are you guys gonna do? Yeah, well, I've got the I've got the car here, and you are. You guys want to get attention. You guys want to get right. the hell out of Soho. Here's the a yeah. It's the, the best word that first. Right. The, having the gut let the car creep up to the alley, I think uh, I think would be a sad, defeated retreat. But well, try to try to pull the kid in with you. Let's take him with. Oh, he's coming. I got him. I mean, be cool about it, though. I mean, don't show him. Kind of try to block him from the door over there where all of his Fuller, people are. Fuller, walk in there. front of me or on the side of me, however. Okay. You know, throw him in the door on the floor of the car. Cool. Everyone get in the car. Let's go. We'll get out of here. Good night, Soho. Good night, Professor Punch. Once we're all in the car, mm -hmm. I'm going to strip him down to his underwear. Well, it's a little difficult to do because you guys are kind of crammed into the car. Well, isn't it like uh, with the rumble seat extended back? It could fit like six fit, people. You fit like eight people in those. So, all right, you have enough room. You strip him down. And I'll use his coat or pants to just tie him. Okay. So where are you guys headed? What does he look like? Who is this kid? What, can we tell about this kid? 
He had a decent suit. He's not very old. He looks, looks a little like bit ragged. Maybe in his mid twenties. Um, he's clean shaven. Uh, his hair is kind of uh, light brown. No facial hair. Um, aquiline features. I don't know. You know Pretty so. nondescript kid. Right. Probably on the skinny side. Yeah, skinny. Uh, he has identification or no? Uh, no. I have a feeling we've got a very low information hostage here, but at least it's going to give us time to get put distance between us and Soho before he could report. And he has, uh, you said he saw the car, he saw both of you, he had. He was following you to begin with, so. Oh, this, oh he knows it all. He's done. This kid's not reporting nothing ever again. No. It might be a good idea to girl, girl him, as they say. Is that the right term? Yeah. Yes. We'll get whatever information we can get out of him, and then I'll take care of him. Yeah, I got an idea how to get rid of him. No problem. Maybe we don't need to get rid of him, per se. Let's, let's find out what we know from him. No, we'll turn him in. He stole, he was found in uh, Felix Matthews' house, uh, breaking and entering, uh, attacked the, the scullery maid. So he'll go away for 15 years. Okay. Oh, I see. We have two very different definitions of get rid of him. I'm just saying that in front of Reginald. <laughs> All right. So where are you heading? Back to Felix's? Or are you gonna take this kid to the, the Wentworth? Place? I was gonna. I, I was thinking maybe. Um, ah, let me take my disguise off. That's the first thing. That accent was tearing me up, you guys. How about you? Man, it feels nice <laughs> to get the get the mission clothes off. I found it strangely refreshing, actually. It, the rest of the evening, I found uh, less than refreshing. It was trying. I have something on the bottom of my shoe. Where would you guys like to go? Do you guys want me to drop you off at the club, or do you want to go to my place? Let's go let's, to your place, but let's uh, stitch up Reginald's head here. He's bleeding all over your back seat. Jesus. Fuller was a little over-enthusiastic, strangely. It was, quick to, it was quick to slice you open. You want me to anyway. do a first aid on you? <laughs> I think maybe I'll have someone else do it. Someone That's less good for stabby. Me. <laughs> so yeah we'll go to my place um, Belvedere have have Benson whip up a plate of just some uh, let's go with fresh fruit and cheese um, if you uh, get any more of the bread left just some triangles of that would go nicely I see yes sir thank you thank you so much Belvedere uh, you guys the showers That's and it. baths are throughout the house if you want to clean up. Yes, we didn't specify where we'd change into our disguises earlier, but I certainly would like to um, get back into my clothing and wash all this off. Right. So, right. If not, there's plenty in the closets. They have wardrobes in each of the bedrooms. Uh, Cyrus. Yes. A moment? Yeah. In the garage? You guys, uh, Belvedere will be up. He'll take care of everything. All right. So all right. two of you head off to the garage. So, um, look, man, I got to get rid of this car. Okay. And we oh. got to get rid of this kid. I already see where it's going. The Matthews cocktail, the car, the kid. The car and the kid both. And what we can do is uh, we'll, we'll bust that steering column. Yep. Snatch the wires down, make it look like he stole it, and then wrecked it. Absolutely. Sounds like and a plan. Once he smashes it. And we'll set him on fire inside of it and burn both. That way we get rid of the car, we get rid of the kid, everything's clean, and I'll report it stolen. Why don't you report it stolen now? That way it's... Or no, yesterday, if you know anybody. Yeah, that's true. Or we just, yeah, uh, we'll take care of that. We'll just get the timeline down. Long story short, though, this kid doesn't have shit for us, so let's just ice him. I mean, we could question him briefly and then... All right. I don't think he has anything, but we could at least 
if he was in the building, he can confirm maybe times that people are there. What time does the big guy get there? What time does the doctor ever leave? Have you ever seen the doctor? You know. True. Yeah, we'll get we'll get whatever we can out of him, then shake him. All right. Probably don't want to say anything to the others. No, not at all. Yep. yep, yep. We turned them in with the the ve- cops and the, you know whatever stolen yeah. vehicle. Man, it'd be nice to get rid of that car. That thing smells like an old boot. <laughs> Even the boot smells like a boot. All right. Time out. <clears throat> so, guys are there cleaning up. Um, did you want to, before your heinous murder of the poor innocent child, um, what? An uh, innocent <laughs> child who works for a mobster who attacks people with a switchblade. Well, what would you like to do to him or with him? Uh, I wanted to find out if he, has he been in the building? I ain't going to talk. Really? I don't, I light a cigarette. Who are you people? Are you police? I put it out on him. I light up another cigarette. This can go on all night or you could talk. What do I care? You can't scare me. Cyrus, you want to break his hand? Um, let's cut his dick off. Okay. Ew. <laughs> that escalated quickly. I, I don't have time to waste, kid. You're already naked. I rip his drawers off, grab his schwanz, and hold up the knife. Ah. <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> So, you, you know, I mean, I, I don't have fucking time to waste, kid. And I put a little tiny cut. Oh, uh, let's see. Who is spot hidden roll? Tattoos? Or is it just really small? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, failed. Find it first. I failed that. I got a two. Okay, Felix. You notice a that all of this this <coughs> stuff that Cyrus is doing, the kid's kind of got a odd smile on his face. But what you really notice is that you realize he's got little cuts and scars all over him. Like, well, I mean, you would say that he's been tortured. But maybe he likes it. Hold on, Cyrus. The guy is working for... Look at this kid, man. He's been marked up all over. Hmm. Cyrus, you notice it too. So let's tickle him. Well, grab his no. feet. No, Mister. I start don't tickle me. I start tickling him. Maybe that'll work. Oh, shit. The, uh, mas- the massacre says, "Beat me, beat me, beat me." The sadist says, "No." Uh, <laughs> um. Is what is, is there currently a tickle fight going on in my garage? Yeah. Um. What he says to you is, you know, you ain't going to get anything out of me. I've been tortured by way better people than you are. And he's like, uh, he's like, you just, you just wait until the doc finds out what you guys are up to and you're all going to die. You're not going to die quick. You're going to die slow and painfully. Doc likes to take his time. He's got people that he's been working on for over a year. It'll be a living hell. Well, I look forward to that day. Well, it's coming. What are you guys after anyway? That guy with all the tattoos on him, carved into his body. What guy? 
punch him. The guy with all the Egyptian stuff all over his body. Well, I I ain't high enough up to know what's going on, but I know the doc ain't seeing anyone right now. Okay. You got Crazy. some operation here. Y'all dressing up like hobos and trying to get into the neighborhood. Well, it worked. I figure you're going to have to kill me, aren't you? Yeah. Eh. Yep, that's coming. I mean, you could spill the beans. We'll give you 100 pounds and you could take off to France or something. I don't know what kind of beans you want from me. Where's the doctor's room located? Does he leave the house? What do you know about Claude Berdu? Are they holding the big meathead? Are they holding? He's not a meathead, dude, but he's like a leader. I wouldn't fuck with him at all. I'd be more afraid of him than anybody else. He's uh he likes torturing people. What's the name of your group? What do you mean what's the name of our group? We just you said we work for Savaggio. You don't have any cool name like the dragons or some crap like that? What do you think we are? Some sort of boys? Listen, you guys are all dead anyway. It's just a matter of time. If you guys were hanging around in that neighborhood, they've noticed you. I noticed you. Right, because we wanted you to, and look where you are. Yeah, doesn't matter. Felix, you have anything for this kid? No. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. And he just smiles at you. That's fine. What, gonna, uh... just trying to make me look over there? <laughs> no, I'm going to choke him out. All right. So, <laughs> might as well go all the way. So, as you're doing that, uh, you can see that he's quite aroused. Oh. And, uh, and you choke him out, and uh, he's dead. We just wanted to pass him out. Oh, that's fine. He can be oh, dead. Oh, okay. Well, no, he's... no. I thought I was finishing him off. What'd you do? Kill him all the way? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Put him in the car. Throw him in the car. Crank it up. We're going to go back down to those docks where the other guys exploded. <laughs> all right. I think that's where we'll end it. With you getting rid of the body. Unless you had something. What'd you say? No, we, right. I was, we were just going to finish up and get the car prepped, have him sitting in it, and basically run it off the uh, run it off the end of the dock and into the into the sea there, or river or whatever it's. Okay, that's one way to get rid of somebody. Do a luck roll. Twenty three. On fifty-five. Oh nine. Okay. Nobody saw you doing this. And that's where we'll leave it until next week. Our players included David Gasaway, John Byron, Fort Fitch, Jason Melnichok, and Derry Bryant. With myself as the keeper of the secrets. We're currently producing up to five shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Mm-hmm.